Welcome back to our channel. So today we'll be reading another little golden book called Walt Disney's Mickey Mouse and the Great Lot Plot. Look at that. Morty and Ferdy dropped their bat and ball and stayed at the sign in front of them. This land for sale? I can't believe it, said Minnie Mouse. This is the only vacant not left for blocks around. Maybe whoever buys the land will let children play here, Mickey Mouse said hopefully. I'm going to buy it, said a voice right behind them. It was Uncle Scrooge McDuck. It's right next to my money bin. It's a perfect place for my new business. Scrooge perfectly planted, pickled, and processed, planted in pickled preserves. Morty and Freddy wrinkled their noses. Oh, well, how can anyone think pickled preserves are more important than baseball? But Scrooge was very sure... They were Scrooge's perfectly planted, pickled, and processed planted. Pickled preserves will be a good business, he said. Then he turned and walked away to his money bin. Making the others followed, they found him seated on a big pile of money, wiggling his toes and smiled happily. Won't you please think it over, Uncle Scrooge, Mickey asked. The children really need a place to run and play. No, answered Uncle Scrooge. My mind is made up. That's final. But playgrounds are important, said Mickey. Then before he quite knew what he was saying, he made an announcement of his own. I'm going to buy the lot and make it into a playground for someone to enjoy. Scrooge laughed so hard he rolled out the pile of money. Where do you get the money to buy this lot? He demanded. As they left the money bin, Mickey's brave smile changed to a frown. Where will I get the money, he wondered, but Minnie and the boys were blubbing with excitement. Why, we'll earn it, they exclaimed. Don't worry, Mickey, our friends will be, will be happy to help, too. And so they were. Then for those next few weeks, Mickey's friends were the busiest people in town. Busiest of all was Mickey himself. He helped Donald Duck and his nephews watch cars. Then he helped dry Huey, Dewey, and Louie, who got wet as the cars were washing. He helped Goofy, whose dog walking job became too much for him to handle alone. Then he helped Morty and Freddy sell the pies and cakes that Minnie and Daisy Duck baked. At the end of the month, Mickey counted up all the money that they had earned and given to him. He came to exactly $500. That wasn't much, and Mickey was worried. The next day, he went to see Uncle Scrooge. I'm very sad, he said. Altogether, we've only been able to earn $500. Uncle Scrooge and I know that's not enough money to buy the lot. You certainly can't pay much more than that for it. Too bad, Mickey, Uncle Scrooge said, smiling. Looks like the lot will be mine. I'm sh I'm, it's sure a perfect place for my new pickled preserve factory. Later that day, Scrooge was walking happily down the street and stopped in front of the empty lot. Hi, Uncle Scrooge. There were Morty and Ferdy. Got any jobs you want done? Certainly not, snapped Uncle Scrooge. The only thing I need is understanding what's so important about a playground. A lot of foolishness, if you ask me. Hum. We can't tell you, said Morty. But we can show you, added Ferdy. Here, catch, Morty shouted. And before he knew it, Uncle Scrooge was out on the empty lot playing a fast game of baseball. It was nearly dark when the three finally sat down to rest. Well, Uncle Scrooge, said Morty, now do you see what's so great about playground? Uncle Scrooge was puffing so hard he couldn't answer them. The next day, the boys were waiting when Uncle Scrooge came down the street. Ta, you're it shouted Morty. You're it, yelled Ferdy. And before he knew what had happened, Uncle Scrooge was chasing the boys across the field. You can play all kinds of good games on a playground, said Morty, when they stopped to rest at last. Hmm. Uncle Scrooge, hmm. This time he was so tired that he fell asleep right there under a tree. While he slept, he had a very strange dream. It was like no dream Uncle Scrooge had ever had before. Champion game player. The next day, Mickey and his friends watched 
as the owner of the land, put up a new sign on the lot. It said, sold to Scrooge McDuck. Everyone groaned. Everyone, that is except Scrooge. He was overjoyed. They all turned to leave, their faces sad. Scrooge shouted, wait, here for a few minutes. I have a surprise for you. Soon workmen began to arrive. They lifted swings and slides into place. They started to dig a swimming pool in the corner. They marked the lines for a baseball diamond. Who just stood there and grinned while Mickey and his friends gave three tremendous cheers. Uncle Scrooge, Mickey asked, how can I ever thank you enough? We're awfully glad you changed your mind. Now we can buy uniforms for all the baseball team using our $500. The first day of the first game in the new park finally arrived. Uncle Scrooge was given the honor of hitting the very first pitch ball. Hurrah! The crowd cheered as the ball soared into the air. The cheer was cut short by a tinkling of glass. The ball had crashed through a window and screwed his own money bin. Uh oh, sorry about your window, Uncle Scrooge called Mickey. But Uncle Scrooge already was already on his way to first base. It's only glass he shared over his shoulder. But did you see that? I do believe I hit a home run. Good story. Hope you guys enjoyed Mickey Mouse and the Great Lot Plot. Uh, stay tuned for more book reads coming soon. Bye.